When you stand at this point, um, you can hear the sounds of trains in the marshalling yards. And that's a clue to what this diversion is all about. You see, in 1843, the city of Wolverhampton had grown no end. It was really busy, and the old low-level train station was inadequate. So they developed plans to build a new station, which was, of course, called the high-level station. That's the station that we know today. The problem was, the route of the canal stood on the line of the new train station. Now, the canal trade was still absolutely fundamental to the success of this area. So, they dug out a new canal with a deep cutting and a tunnel which contained the uh, entrance road to the station and then they used the line of the old canal to build the new station. So, this is the southern entrance to the arm that used to go under the line that went under today's station, if that makes sense. So what we'll do is we'll go and have a look and see if we can find the northern entrance. And here we have it, the northern entrance to the old line of the canal that used to go under the line of the new high-level train station. It's now known as Broad Street Basin, still very well used with all its facilities, at some point water point, and an integral part of the Wolverhampton Canal scene. The area was redeveloped in the 1980s and the triangular area of land where I'm now standing was the Hay Basin. And directly opposite Hay Basin there's a little stub arm that still contains a few boats. This was the entrance to the Victoria Arm and it continued on for about 400 yards lying beneath what is now the carvers merch, builders merchants. Two thirds of the way down the Wolverhampton 21 flight of locks at uh, the Wolverhampton Science Park there's a little bit of uh, backwater that most people would overlook. Look, immediately beside lock 14 there's an old loading bay and if you just walk into the Science Park here it is. been out of water for many years. This wall has no doubt been rebuilt over time.
So I've now come down to lock 20 on the Wolverhampton flight of locks. When it was originally built, lock 20 would have been recognised as the bottom lock. And this is the last bit of Lost Canal that I'm going to look at in this Canal Hunter series. You see, when the original flight of locks was built, lock 20 was the odd one out. It sat at the bottom of the flight and for some reason they built it 10 feet deep compared to 5 feet on the rest of the flight. 20 is distinctive in that the bottom gate has just one gate whereas all the rest of the flight the bottom gates are made of two mitred gates. And the original line of the canal ran out beyond the gates behind me uh, five feet higher up. So we're going to follow the route down from here to the lock 21 as it became and we can see some telltale traces on lock 21 of how it used to be before it was altered. Predictably having a really deep lock at the bottom caused all sorts of trouble because every time you use this lock you use twice the amount of water that's being flushed down by the ones above. So they tried thinking of other alternatives and there was talk about building a reservoir part way up. But... So the original line of the canal continued on at the same level as this lock and went round the bend. In fact this bend is insanely tight and if you come out of this lock you find that the boat comes onto the right hand side on the towpath side and it's got metal buffers to push you around. Um, halfway around you can see there's some little bits that stick out and that bumped the boat out a bit further. So this really is a corner that's a bit too tight for most boats. Really they shoehorned in that extra lock and uh, it's just a little bit uncomfortably uh, as far as navigation is concerned. And we're now at the site of the bottom lock. Originally when it was built it was 10 feet deep, this one is now 5. So as I stand beside the lock and I look around myself you can see there is a wall on the one side and there is a retaining wall on the other and upstream something of a cutting. So the uh, cutting was dug out, the log was, lock was half down and what we have is a half height lock. And the half height lock comes with the traditional mitred bottom gates. So we finally reach Aldersley Junction where the Birmingham Canal met the Staffs and Worcester in 1772. The lock you see behind me was the original lock 20, it became 21 when it was reduced. So there's a missing fragment of canal five feet above the present one. This is the end of the Birmingham Canal. It's the end of Canal Hunter Series 2. But it's by no means the end of the other 60 miles of the Birmingham Canal navigations. The Birmingham Canal navigations stretch out to the east and to the west of the main line to Wolverhampton. And when I return in the autumn, when the leaves have fallen off the trees, we're going to go up the Whirly and Essington and we're going to see what arms we can find up there. I can promise you, whilst I've been looking for short lengths along this stretch, as you go up the Whirly and Essington, you start to clock them off by the mile. So I really hope you've enjoyed series two as we've carried on exploring the abandoned sections of canal uh, this time between Spon Lane and Wolverhampton. I hope I've inspired some of you to get your boots on and to go out and have a look yourselves and I wish you all a very happy summer and I'll see you in the winter. Thank you and goodbye. Happy hunting.